Hello, my name's Hans and today at Rumor Brothers we're going to fit this LED conversion kit to this Land Rover Defender 90. Here I've opened the box of the LED light kit and there's good instructions on the inside cover but there are also these hidden underneath the foam and the LED lights so make sure you find these and they'll be really useful when we come to fit the kit. Here's the relay that needs to be fitted to change over so it operates the LED lights. You may not realise which one of these does which job but they are coloured slightly and also underneath if you remove one of the lights and take off the foam backing there's a part number underneath which then tells you that this is actually the tail stop light. Also it has three connections so we know that one sits the tail and stop light. The single pin, that'll be the indicator front or rear, indicator front or rear, and these two different side lights. Okay, so we removed the cover with the two thumb screws. Now we can see the fuse panel and we've identified the indicator relay as this one. If we can't work out which one it is, if we put on the indicators or the hazard warning, we should hear it clicking and if we feel which one it is, we'll notice we can feel the noise through the finger. So we found that this is the right one. So to make access easier, we're going to undo the screw. We just loosen the bolt out. Don't have to take it all the way out, but if we can pull it back, we can then get a bit more room to pull the relay out. We can then pick up the new relay, make sure it's orientated the right way around and insert it into the socket. Might be a little bit fiddly, but take your time, don't bend any of the pins. And there we are. We can fit it all back together. First of all, we'll remove these two screws. I'm using a Phillips screwdriver, and if we carefully withdraw it, we can see it's got a plug-in connection. And if we depress that tag there, we can then unplug the unit. Before we fit the new LED light unit, make sure that you insert the screws through the rubber gasket and the lettering on the lens is facing the right way around. If we need to identify what LED light this is, it has the part number underneath the rubber gasket. So now we can just plug in the connector block, kind of going one way around and it should click when it's finally home. Once we've inserted that, we can insert the wiring and screw in the two screws. Just a quick note, when you look at the part numbers for the LED lights, these are the part numbers which give the description of where they fit. But we're fitting a clear kit, and so the amber part number and the red part number are not applicable. You won't find those in the kit just the clear ones. Before we fit the new rear LED indicator, note it has a different part number to the front indicator. So this one is a part number which is S6064 and we'll fit that one by removing the old unit and plugging in the new one. Straightforward, easy to do. Shouldn't be any problem fitting these. While we're fitting this LED conversion kit, we're also going to fit an LED reversing light and a fog light. The fog light, you can see, comes with no connector block to plug in, and uh, so we need to make some wiring adjustments on the inside of the old unit. Bringing the old unit out, we can see somebody's already put some connectors on there which have seen better days and they're not factory standards so we need to identify which is positive and negative and then chop these off and reconnect the two cables together. Before we fit the fog light which always goes on the drivers or off side in the UK we must make sure which of these is positive and negative. Uh, pretty sure the black ones are negative and the grey ones the positive. First of all make sure that these are apart and then we need to put the fog lights on and then connect the multimeter. 
to use the multimeter, we're going to set it onto the voltage setting, DC volts, which on this multimeter is that one, and using the probes, connect up to these connections. Now we can see we've got a minus 11.4 volts, which means we need to change these connectors around, and then this will identify the red probe will go to the positive connection and the negative probe shows the negative connection. When we show 11 or 12 or whatever volts without the minus sign we have now identified which is negative and which is positive. We've cut the old connectors off and carefully using some Y strippers we're going to strip off the insulation and then fit these bullet connectors. They should fit on easily and we can crimp them up using the right crimping tool. On these light units, which shows you on the back which colour wires go to wherever, the negative is the white and on this case the red is the positive. So you can see we've connected that to the grey wire and the white wire to the black wire. All we need to do now is make sure it's orientated the right way around carefully insert the cables and fit the screws. After completing the fog light on the right hand side we do exactly the same for the reversing light on the left hand side and all the other lights we just remove the old units and change them just the same way we've done on this corner. It's all plug and play shouldn't be any problem. Now we've fitted all the lights and the indicator relay we can check the side lights are working, um, the brake lights and finally the indicators. We can check uh, the fog lights, put the head main beam and the fog lights should be working now and finally reversing light. That should all be on now, job finished.